Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to my favorite channel here on YouTube, Draw Too Much. My name is Tim, and I'm going to be showing you some cool stuff today on the iPad Pro and how I use it to draw on so do to do some of my commissions now we've been doing a series we just started a series uh, just called what I use and it's going to be a couple episodes of showing you guys what I use in my drawings when I create artwork for my clients look at the previous video it's a video on procreate which is the first icon here uh, in this program on my iPad and uh, it's a really 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 great program now something I mentioned in the previous video is that there's something that's very very exciting about this program and I showed it to you guys and then my stream froze up because I was doing that video as a live so I'm gonna show you again really quick because I know you missed out on that and I don't want you to miss out on that the beautiful thing about procreate and you can watch all the video that shows everything I love about it but one of the gorgeous things is this right here the video mode as long as you have that tick turned on on time-lapse recording it stays on for any new piece that you open up in the future and it is secretly recording you in the background Sounds like a gross thing, but it's not. It's actually really awesome. Because if I hit time-lapse replay, you can see here that it, it has recorded your whole drawing process. And with your finger, you can take, touch, and pull. And you can quickly look through your whole commission, how you went from start to finish. You can rewind and fast forward. And if you love what you see, you can go right here to share and export video. And you can send that video out. Put it up on your Facebook or whatever. It compresses it down to a very small amount of time. I think this video here was a maximum of three minutes or so. Um, and it's it's amazing. That is one of the best things about this program that I love about it. Anyway, thank you so much for coming and joining me today. I am drawing on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch tablet using the iPad Pencil, which is amazing. This thing is hands down. And like I said, if you want to really get my opinion on the iPad Pro, go jump over to the previous video. It's a slightly long intro, but within that long intro, I tell you guys that this puts my 21 inch Wacom screen to shame. And uh, that that's very much true because it's portable. I can take it wherever. And I'm doing full professional pieces on here that I'm selling for several hundred bucks at a time. So today we're going to look at a program that I don't use as much, but it does come in very handy at times, Sketchbook. I'm going to open up Sketchbook and we're going to take a look inside here and do a little walkthrough of Sketchbook. Now, um, I would really appreciate if you go watch the first video. It is 30 minutes long, but I think it's totally worth it. Um, I've told you some of the pros and cons that I mentioned uh, in there that, that I think are very, very important with art programs that really should be in there. Um, if you have not watched that, then some of this might not quite connect with you. Um, but we're going to look at things like, once again, canvas size and DPI, um, and of course, some of the different tools and things in here uh, that I think uh, are either better, or equal, or not so good uh, than Procreate. So having a little bit of knowledge, what I said in the first video about Procreate is going to help you out. Okay? All right. So basically, this is the program. Um, and I do have uh, some sketches in here, as you can see, some different pieces that I've done in here. Not many, quite honestly, because I really don't use this program for more than one key feature um, that I find extremely useful that I wish Procreate had. And because Procreate doesn't, I come over here to this program. I use this program strictly as a sketch program, um, and I don't do much inking. Uh, this piece right here, I did ink it in this program. It did a good job. Um, but it still just does not quite have, uh, it doesn't quite have what I need. And I'm going to tell you why. Either I haven't learned how to do this per myself correctly and I haven't done much research on it because I'm a busy artist or because I just, it doesn't feel as natural as Procreate does. So let's go ahead and start by first looking through, um, the, how this works. I'm going to open up a new image. And first things first, you remember if I if uh, if you were listening to my previous video about Procreate, you know that I love the idea that we can make DPI uh, something that's important. We can set a DPI in uh, in Procreate. You can't do that here, not as far as I can tell. They have some presets, but you can see that these are all just in pixel resolutions. So that means that if I want to make a image that's huge. 
for a high resolution uh, piece that's for clients, I honestly can't really do that here to the extent that I can in Procreate. In Procreate, I can do a piece that's 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels at 600 DPI, which means that the ability of it being blown up to a vast size is completely possible before it starts to pixelate. In this program, I don't know what its standard DPI is. I know no most. I know most screens uh, run at 72 DPI, um, and that is fine, all well and good if you're drawing a profile picture for someone. But I do pieces that go on the sides of cars. I do pieces that go on billboards. I do pieces that go on banners. So I need something that's definitely going to give me something that I can be certain is going to work for the client by the time I'm done. Um, and this program is excellent in many ways, but at the scale that I try to work at for my clients, even if they don't use it for that purpose, I want to make sure that I can meet the demands of possible clients that are of a larger scale than just the guy wanting a profile picture. So right here, you can see I have a canvas here at 5,000 by 6,670. So it's a big canvas. That basically means this can be blown up to 50 inches by 66 inches roughly. Um, and that's a good size canvas. Um, now, that's only if this is uh, at 100 DPI. I'm assuming it's at 72 DPI, so that means you might have to drop it down. This may go to 40 inches uh, wide and maybe... Uh, 55 inches uh, tall. It, uh, you know, it, it depends on the DPI. If you don't understand DPI and PPI, I did make a video on it. You can go and take a look at that um, on my YouTube channel, and I did explain all of that. I'm going to go ahead and create the artwork. Here's our artwork in our canvas now. Um, I'm going to quickly make one. I guess I can't. Never mind. I was going to make a change, but I do want you to see the whole canvas here. Um, so this is the starting input. This is what you see when you walk in here. Uh, there's quite a few different settings. I do like Procreate. It's a bit more simple. Uh, there's not as much going on on the user interface there. Um, but there are some new features here because uh, this is the um, Sketchbook Pro that just came out. It's a brand new edition. Now, the difference, one of the differences between Procreate and Sketchbook Pro, which is something I've already mentioned, is that you do pay uh, per, uh, per year for Sketchbook. Uh, where Procreate, you buy it once, you get it all. <clears throat> um, I personally like that about Procreate. I don't like this whole subscription-based thing that we're in right now, and I just don't see it getting any better. But So I, I live with it, and I go with it, but truth be told, I do think that um, having this system uh, it, purchase once and make your money back on it, I do think that's very important. All right, so there's quite a few different settings here that I think are very beneficial. Uh, you can see all the different tools on the side here. There's quite a few. And, of course, if I hit this button here, uh, there's a large list of, of tools that you can use. Um, very much like Procreate, they build stuff to be somewhat realistic uh, to what you'd be used to. Um, the thing I like about Procreate is that I can make a brush that is more of a vector brush. It doesn't try to... Um, it doesn't try to mimic reality because I don't want some things to mimic reality. I don't want to use a pen that's then going to bleed where I draw like I do on paper because I like vectored hard crisp lines. I love that. Um, some of the best comics I like to read are the ones that are drawn digitally because they are they're crisp line edges and you don't see blur and, 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 and effect in there. So... I think you can definitely create your own brush. I haven't done that yet in this program because, like I said, I use this program for one particular tool. And I'll get to that in a moment. But you can definitely build your own brushes. You can preset whatever you want. I've preset the top row to be my most used brushes. Uh, the pencil tool does very well. It does feel very nice and natural. Um, and the pen tool I do like. And you can see that, yes, I have kind of structured that a little bit more to be much more vector. And I actually do love how this pen tool does in comparison to Procreate. I do think that this is an excellent inking tool. I do. Um, especially when doing um, uh, stuff that's supposed to be a bit more uh, vectorized. Maybe you're doing a vector logo that needs a lot of dagger stroke effects in the shadows. This, this app um, does very well with certain key features like that. Um, the next one here is going to be my blending tool, which I think is an excellent blender. I do wish that Premiere Pro, no, no, excuse me, not Premiere Pro, I'm sorry, uh, that Procreate uh, would have a better blending tool. Now, maybe I haven't made a tool that works as good for me. Maybe I just need to work on making one a little better. But when push comes to shove, I do like feeling like I'm coming in here 
with a natural setup and I'm sold on the program because if I don't like the brushes I'm not gonna like the program that's pretty much it I think that would be said with everyone I do like the next brush here it, I think it's got a very cool texture to it um, and it does have a uh, almost like a marker effect even though it is more of a uh, brush marker basically but I do love the, t the feeling of it the texture of it I do think that that does really nice and honestly I've sketched a couple of sketches using this instead of using my pencil because I do like the feeling of of how it draws it almost feels like a pencil in its own right and I do like that structure I do think that that's kind of cool so um, I have used that for a couple pieces, and I do like its thick to thins as well. It has some really great thick to thins, comes to a gorgeous point on, on the ends, which is a really, really cool tool. And I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could remove the texture in this brush, and it would probably be a really great inking brush as well. And then an eraser as well. I've programmed this eraser in here. The erasers that they put in here are these right here and when you erase with them they don't do nearly as well as the old legacy eraser does when I erase I want it to completely remove stuff when they erase they want to remove only a certain opacity of it so I personally like the old legacy eraser which they do have in the other options here okay to change the brush size they got some new effects here that I think are really cool one here's one way to do it this is the old way you can grab the top here and pull to the right or pull to the left to make it bigger or smaller, which is kind of standard. If you want to change the opacity, you click the, on that same one. You go up to raise the opacity and down to lower it, uh, and that works somewhat well, but I like their new feature. Their new feature is over here on the tool, and you can see over here I can do the exact same thing over here. I like this a lot, quite a bit. Um, I like this far more than I like doing it from this weird thing, okay? This doesn't it doesn't feel right, um, and, and this one on this side here has a more natural feeling to me. So I prefer to go this route with this. Um, and then also, of course, if you hide everything, uh, which I got to remember how to hide stuff, then all those same functions are still over here on the side of the window, as well as your color picker selector. I do think this is really cool. If you hold down on it, you can select your colors. If you want to change your brush, you move your thumb up. You can pick your different brush. If you come down, you can do layer. I really do love this because that does suddenly take that very messy um, convoluted structure here, which is not messy, but it's, it's all there. You can hide all that. And now all those same features are right here. And I do think this is really, really epic. I just personally haven't built this program to work with me because I'm such a big fan of Procreate. Um, the other thing I like about Procreate, like I showed you at the start of this video, is that it does record uh, the screen. Uh, I can make a new file and immediately start drawing. And as long as the program doesn't crash, it's recording the whole process. And by the time it's done, not only can I share the drawing with the, the client, but I can also share the building process with the client using the video. That's a really big win to me. Um, this does have the ability to record time lapse, but you have to activate it yourself. Once it's activated, then you're good to go and you can start drawing. And it works the same way uh, once it's done you can save it to your photo library, which works just fine. But I don't want to have to think about turning that on. I've, I've been sold on um, been sold on the program doing that for me. If I had a way to default this program to stay in recording mode um, when I make a new panel, I would. Um, let me quickly just erase everything here. Your layers panel is on this side, and there are quite a few beautiful options in here. I know a lot of artists who work in Procreate, I mean, in, in, uh, in, in Sketchbook, and it's a very, very good program. Now, let me show you, excuse me, a little bit about what I don't like about this program, okay? Um, one of the things that I do is I use um, stability. Um, I'm not a perfect artist. No one's a perfect artist. Um, and when it comes down to it, I want my lines to look somewhat clean. And they do look pretty clean in this program if you have a quick hand. And I've learned to have a quick hand so that my lines stay somewhat clean. But when you get focused and you start drawing lines very slowly or you're pushing really hard, you can see the texture in there. You can see the, the bounce and the, the feeling in that. That's why I use stabilization, whether it be from an old program or a new program. So that's that's important to me to get rid of that. And stabilization in Procreate does an excellent job. Now, Sketchbook has just come out with an option that's very much like that. Not completely, but it's very close. It's right here. 
and it's called predictive stroke. Now, predictive stroke does work, but it doesn't work as smoothly. Predictive stroke assesses the line and then changes it after the fact. That, to me, is a lose. I don't like that. I, I don't want to draw, and then it changes it. You see how it immediately changed that? If I draw an ear and then I release, it changes it. I don't like that. And if I turn it down to level one and I do it again, you can see it's still predicting a different structure than what I want. If I was doing it in Procreate and I drew this line, it would stay there. So this doesn't work for me. I don't like this so much. I would prefer that they would go the direction of correcting the line as I'm drawing it. Um, and, I, and I see about how Procreate does it. It takes a little delay in the line, but in, it is correcting the line as it's going through. It's much better than this predictive text thing. Um, this predict predictive line thing. This program is still excellent. It's still great, but I've just I'm so used to having my lines slightly corrected for me and slightly cleaned up because I like everything to look really really vector. That this program does turn me off slightly in that way, and that is one of the reasons why I do not use this program in comparison to using Procreate. Now, where do I actually use this program? Because considering this whole series is called What Do I Use? Um, this, I'll show you where this comes in handy. One thing that Procreate is missing, and I feel they are amiss by not having this function, uh, is symmetry. I love, 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 love drawing in symmetry. Symmetry is an amazing, amazing thing. Um, and this program has one of the best symmetrical tools in the business. I love their symmetry tool. When you turn it on, you can start drawing immediately and you can see that it is drawing in symmetry already. And I absolutely love this feature because I'm doing all kinds of stuff uh, for my clients that requires a lot of stuff to be in direct symmetry or requires stuff to be in... Um, you know, in, in a certain perfect perspective. Uh, like, I get a lot of clients who want me to draw their quadcopters. Quadcopter's a little flying machine. And uh, and I have to draw this flying machine, but it has to, if I have the flying machine flying straight at us, it's going to need to be really, really exact. Not to mention that I don't want to spend a lot of time drawing it um, if I can have the, the program do it for me. And so... I do that. I go here, and I'll show you one that I did just recently. Here is uh, a quad. Whoops. I just deleted it. I don't know how I deleted it. I don't even know what just happened there. I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm going to touch him. Hopefully, I won't delete him. Okay. So, this quad right here is in perfect symmetry. Um, I drew this in the program with a line straight down the center of it. But I only did it in Sketch, and then I took it over to Procreate. I inked half of it, and then I copied it and merged the two together to make this quadcopter. This is wonderful for me to have the ability to create um, the, the symmetrical artwork in, in this program. It's an excellent program when it comes to symmetry. Um, so I can draw, if I have to draw a quadcopter, I can draw the lens, I can draw the camera, I can draw the body of the quadcopter going off into the distance, I can draw the standoffs, and then the arm coming out with the motors on the, on the things and the propeller, and I only have to draw half of it, and then when I'm ready, I can take it into my other program and just ink one side of it, like this side, and then copy and paste and flip in Procreate to get the other side. It would be so much easier if Procreate just had a symmetry, a symmetry feature, but they don't. So that's why I come into this program and I draw on this program so much. Um, when it comes to other features, there's tons of stuff here. Uh, Procreate does not have the ability to put in text, but this program does. You can put text in this program, which is wonderful. Um, you can you can do quite a bit you can do quite a bit more in this program than you can in Procreate in some ways and in other ways you can do more in Procreate than you can in this program. So I do find that there is a a, a marriage um a bit with these two programs. Um, it's good to have both in in your in your system so that you can work with both to build that final piece. And as long as you have the ability to import artwork or import images, import reference photos, um, then you're going to be okay. And this program has that as well. I am certain without a shadow of a doubt that I could create a professional piece that would sell easily 
for a hundred dollars plus in this program. Uh, but I am, I am very much a fan of procreate. I feel that procreate does a very, very good job, um, with most of the features that I'm looking for. And until I learn this program a little better, because so far I've been turned off by it because I haven't taken the time to try to create what needs to be created in this program. Uh, like the, the, the brushes that I need. Um, this this program takes a back seat to procreate for me personally but like i said in those moments when i need symmetry in those moments when someone says hey i need you to draw me a logo for uh my kids uh, uh team my kids soccer team or whatever um and i want it to be a hawk or something like that and i want it to have that real uh kind of logo feel well then i come into here into procreate and i begin my starting structures of what um because I like doing symmetry, um, I'll start the structures of what I think this hawk should look like and then go from there to build up the final principle, uh, either in Procreate or I'll even take this. And actually, I'd probably take it into Procreate and, and do my final structure here in, in Procreate, excuse me. But, uh, but all this really cool stuff of getting the structure of what I'm looking for for the hawk or, or whatever kind of feeling I'm trying to grab, I can do that all in this program with this nice symmetry. Um, is there anything else I can really tell you very much about this program? Um, there's a ton of features. There really are. This is a very in-depth loaded program. Um, and I know a lot of artists look up, um, Nolan Harris, who is one of my favorite caricaturists. He is amazing and inspires me daily with the artwork that he's creating. Um, he works in a sketchbook and he is excellent at it. He makes it look flawless. Um, his work is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a fanboy for sure. Um, but when it comes down to it, um, until I learn this program better, until I can see that this program can do what I need, um, and that predictive stroke immediately disqualifies this, um, as to, to be as good as procreate. Um, that's why I stick with what I stick with. And like I said, if you had, if you don't know much about Procreate, go watch the previous video. Um, I, I'm pretty much going to leave it at that. Your color picker can be over here on this selection. There's also my, my favorite thing about this program. Uh, there are some functions on the bottom, which is awesome too. You can flip and rotate your canvas and stuff. But my, my personal favorite feature in this is this, this nice quiet, um, canvas where you can change your size. You can change your opacity, and this especially, I think, is very, very ingenious. This button where you, as soon as you hold it down, and you hold it down, and you keep it held down, you can do all your selections in here for whatever you want to change. Uh, same with changing your layers, same with changing your brush. I think this is ingenious. If Procreate could put this kind of technology in their program, it would add twice as much more value to me because quite honestly, this is amazing um, in itself in Sketchbook. So Sketchbook does have some features that are really, really, really great. Um, I, I wish that either Sketchbook would buy a Procreate or Procreate would buy a Sketchbook and they'd make a ver merge of the two. Some crazy thing would happen. Some hacker would break in, take the two programs, put them together and make um, Sketch Create, Sketch Create, uh, Pro, Pro, Pro Sketching. I don't care. Pro, pro book, I don't know, and and come up with something that, that has the two merged. Um, I I am a fan of both programs, but admittedly, Procreate at this moment in time, because I've been focused very much in Procreate, um, has that has that value that I'm looking for more so. This does too, but it's it's second place to Procreate. If, if, a, if a client came up to me, say if Sketchbook came up to me and said, hey, we're having a special event in New York. We need you to come out and draw caricatures live, uh, but you have to use our program Sketchbook. I'm all in. Um, if Procreate came to me and said, hey, I need you to come out to our event and do caricatures in, in Procreate uh, live, I'm in. Um, so both these programs work perfectly fine. It's just pre preference. So try it out for yourself. You may find you like it or not. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with either of these programs. They're both an amazing high quality value. And I do think that this is worth the 25 bucks a month that I pay uh, to have this program. Uh, and, and by having this program, you can also have it on your desktop. You can have it on your smartphone. You can have it on your iPad, your whatever program, whatever. They make it so you can have it seamless across all your different apps, which I think is pretty sweet.
So I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget, I do have a Patreon account, and if you're willing to support me on there, that would be amazing. It would be an answer to prayer. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for anyone who's donated to the cause uh, for these videos, and uh, it means a lot to me. It, it's, and you guys are my answer to prayer. I mean that. Um, and then, of course, also um, make sure that you stop on by my Facebook, Draw Too Much on Facebook, where you can see all my artwork I'm working on for my clients. Don't be afraid to give me a private message, say hi, and of course, if you're interested in some artwork, give me a buzz. We'll talk about what you're interested in and see if we can come up with something for you. So I think that's going to do it. Um, oh, one more thing. We have started a new Facebook group that you can find on my Draw Too Much page, and it's called the Draw Too Much Artists Anonymous, and it's basically the same idea of Alcoholics Anonymous, except that we want to encourage you to keep up with your addiction. And uh, come on in there, hang out with a bunch of us awesome people, uh, share us your, your artwork. We, we love seeing the artwork of other people. There's a bunch of people in there right now just chatting back and forth, having fun, looking at each other's artwork you know, and giving each other props or giving each other advice on how to improve. It's a really great community and I'd love for you to be involved. So it's called Draw Too Much Artist Anonymous and you can find that on my Draw Too Much page on Facebook. All right, I think that's going to do it. I will see you guys next time right here on another video when we're going to go ahead and take a look a little bit more in depth at one more program, I think. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and get some drawing done and teach you guys a little bit more about how I use this um, iPad Pro and my programs to make a full commission from start to finish uh, as we continue through these videos. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You are amazing, beautiful people. I will see you next time. Keep being brave. See ya.